Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of June 28th, brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com, your website for news, information, commentary, and more without the corporate spin. My name is Winston Smith. Cut or uncut in San Francisco, WikiLeaks in Haiti, Something Fishy Down in the Gulf, Our Asshole of the Week, and more. P.E. Nolan is off again this week. First, our top story. According to the Center for Disease Control, the Northwest United States is experiencing a sharp rise in infant mortality rates. A 35% increase was shown in eight cities in the Northwest. According to San Francisco Bay View, we have learned that there was a delay in false statements and releasing data about the amount of radiation coming from the Fukushima reactor, and that multiple news sources report radioactive cesium and iodine in milk, fruit, and vegetables here in the U.S. Adding to the problem of knowing the level of radioactive release is that often amounts have been calculated rather than actually measured. Spewing from the Fukushima reactor are radioactive isotopes, all of which are taken up in food and water. The unborn and babies are more vulnerable because their cells are rapidly dividing, and the delivered dose is proportionally larger than that delivered to an adult. Many doctors and scientists are sounding the alarm here in the U.S., but the U.S. government is doing nothing to find out if there's a connection to the rise in child death and the radiation from Japan. Since the nuclear accident, the U.S. government has cut funding for the EPA and even stopped monitoring for certain isotopes. How do we find out if there is a link between the Fukushima radiation release and the death of our children? The research is not te technically difficult. It is the politics and the corporate control of them that seems to be the barrier. Once again, children right here in America may be dying because of the inaction and often counteraction of the ones elected to protect the most valuable resource we have, our children. San Francisco. San Francisco is set to be the first U.S. city to hold a public vote on banning male circumcision. According to CBS News, the proposed law would ban circumcision on males under the age of 18. What if a child is born into a religion that requires circumcision? It wouldn't matter. The scalpel wielder would face a misdemeanor charge punishable by a $1,000 fine or up to one year in jail. Supporters of the ban say male circumcision is unnecessary, painful form of genital mutilation that parents should not be allowed to force on their children. But Muslim and Jewish groups say it's their right to mutilate their children. So they're suing the city of San Francisco to stop the measure from being put on the ballot to begin with. It's a measure that would basically infringe upon my rights as a Muslim to practice here, said one plaintiff. Other plaintiffs share similar sentiments. As Jews, we take the threat of banning circumcision personally, said Jeremy Benjamin. The American Academy of Pediatrics says the procedure cuts both ways. In its official policy statement on circumcision, the Academy says antidotal evidence of potential downsides. They do know it causes pain and a reduction in sexual sensation. No matter how you slice it, this one is an emotionally charged debate, and we will be keeping up on it. From Louisiana Weekly, Feds unveil plan for offshore golf fishing farms. In a couple of years, you may see farmed fish coming to a supermarket near you. Farmed fish from the Gulf of Mexico. That's because the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has put out a new policy and framework for introducing commercial farms into federal Gulf water. Aaron Viles, Deputy Director of the Gulf Restoration Network in New Orleans, doesn't like what he's heard so far. Offshore fish farming is asking for trouble, he said. Intensive farming will pollute ocean waters with their waste. How ocean factory cultivation might affect fish genetics is a worry also. Even if fish native to the Gulf are used, fish bred in captivity develop new traits and some of them will escape and alter the genetics of the native fish, Viles said. But Mr. Viles may not be seeing the big picture here. The corporate media and the corporate government have been working together to convince the American people that the Gulf Coast already has recovered from the largest oil release in history and that its bounty has returned to normal. But many scientists, engineers, doctors, and independent reporters have been saying the government is hiding the true facts. Fish, dolphins, and many other wildlife species are declining and vanished. Some have vanished altogether. The U.S. government, under orders from Barack Obama, have put a gag order on any information taxpayer-funded agencies may have about true damage done to the whole ecosystem in the Gulf. Now they're using taxpayer money to set up a giveaway to more corporations who will profit from open-water seafood farming, 
putting the small family-owned fishing industry out of business for good and handling to, handing over total control of the Gulf to multinational corporations. Now, staying down south, U.S. diplomatic cables released by WikiLeaks show how U.S. politicians and corporations were greedily slobbering up over the potential pickings they could extract from the country in the wake of the devastating earthquake of January 2010. According to the Haiti Liberty, the latest cables give a damning indictment of what is also known as disaster capitalism. On February 1, 2010, a cable written by Ambassador Kenneth Merton under the heading, The Gold Rush is On, reads, As Haiti digs out from the earthquake, different U.S. companies are and should be moving in to sell their concept products and services. The cable shows how U.S. disaster recovery firm Ashbrit Incorporated proposed a national plan to rebuild all the government buildings in Haiti. According to the February 1st cable, Ashbrit was accused of double billing for one contract by more than $700,000 following a 1999 Hurricane Wilma, and was similarly accused of profiteering in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. Louis Luck, who was the U.S. Coordinator for Relief and Reconstruction in Haiti, left his post after just three months to sub subsequently land a $30,000 a month deal with Ashbrit to help it land some $20 million in reconstruction deals on the island. Lucky told Haiti Liberty, it's kind of the American way. There's nothing insidious about that. It wasn't worse than anything we did in Iraq. Great. Oh, I hear it's time for Worldwide Hippies Asshole of the Week. And this week it goes to my old hometown, Rochester, New York's Police Department, for illegally assaulting and arresting a woman for videotaping from her own property. The Rochester, New York Police Department evidently must be very paranoid group. This I can attest to. Back in May of this year, a citizen by the name of Emily Good was arrested for invoking her legal right to videotape the police conducting an investigation from the safety of her own property line sidewalk. I don't know about anyone else, but every time I see or hear of a police officer using his or her power to obstruct a citizen's right, I get angry, very angry, said Michael Kirk, writing in the Chicago Now. The United States is becoming a police state. Given the countless stories of police abuse in any given year, law-abiding citizens should be very concerned. The irony of Emily Good's story is that the person who was stopped, handcuffed, and subjected to a police search was released without so much as a ticket. But Emily Good, who was merely taking a video count of the proceedings, did get arrested. Once police make a stop in front of somebody's homes, they, ha they have no expectation of privacy. Citizens have a reasonable right to take their tax dollars at work, especially from their own home. I realize it's a tough world out there, and there are a lot of times when our police are concerned for not only their safety, but for those people in the area. But there did not appear to be any such danger in Emily Good's case. After all, that kid was cuffed and surrounded by three cops. I certainly feel for our men and women in blue, but they must exercise some common sense, too. That policeman saw that Emily Good was no danger to them, and whether he likes it or not, she was within her legal rights. The bottom line here is that we are still a nation of laws, and as such, Everyone is entitled to equal protection under it. And when the law begins to resemble disorder all around us, then we have a right to record it. As I have preached all along, people better stay vigilant with what is happening around them, whether it be our elected or appointed officials or those working for the benefit of our public safety. Nobody is above the law. But the Rochester Police Department feels they are. And for that, they are Worldwide Hippies Asshole Nation Week. That's it for Hippie TV news and stuff. Please visit WorldwideHippies.com for news, information, commentary, and more stuff updated every two hours. And visit the Worldwide Hippie store and make a donation on the site to help Worldwide Hippies keep up the howl for peace and justice. And we will see you next Monday.